Hey guys, thanks for joining us today as we continue our series entitled, I Can Handle It. You see, it is so important that you understand this, that you can handle it. You can handle the uncertainty. You can handle the anxiety. You can handle the fear. You can handle the stress. You can handle the new. You can handle it all. Why? Because Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I know you can handle it because God is with you and the spirit of Christ is operating powerfully on the inside of you. Hey, before we say our declaration today, I wanna let you know today we're going to be talking about how do we handle discouragement. If you know some people right now that are discouraged, been down, you need to hit that share button right now. Come on, hit the share button. Take a moment, hit the share button. Let's get this message out here and let's let it be an encouragement to those who are discouraged. But come on, let's say our declaration now. We say this every Sunday by putting our hand over our heart because that's where this declaration comes from. Say it with me. I am a child of God. I am loved, adored, and accepted by my Father in heaven. I am forgiven and free. Sin has no hold on me. I am an overcomer, more than a conqueror, full of the Spirit of God, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Holy Spirit, open up my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my mind to understand, and my heart to receive everything that God has for me today in Jesus' name. Come on, why don't you go ahead and put a big amen on that. Well, last week we talked about how do you handle disappointment. And we talked about the places that disappointment comes from. Disappointment can come from life. Disappointment can come from other people. And disappointment can even come from ourselves. We will disappoint ourselves. And we said this, we said that being disappointed is a part of life but staying disappointed will destroy your life. You say, why is that so? Because disappointment comes to hold the door open so discouragement can come barging in and take over. We said last week that disappointment is either an open door for discouragement or an opportunity for improvement. Disappointment can be the alert, can be the alarm to let you know that you have a moment to improve or it can be the door holder and the door opener to give discouragement access into your life. Well, we all know, we all know what it is to hang on to disappointment long enough for discouragement to come bombarding into our mind. For, for discouragement to come barging into our soul. And make no mistake about it, the enemy wants you to live discouraged. The enemy wants you to wake up discouraged, to go to work discouraged, to live your days discouraged, to go to bed discouraged. The enemy wants you to be discouraged. And when you see this word broken down, you're going to understand why. Let's break the, apart the word discourage. And when we take the prefix, the D-I-S off, that means apart or away. Apart or away. Let's define courage now. It means the ability to control fear and to be willing to deal with something that is dangerous, difficult, or unpleasant. You see, I want you to look at this right now. I want you to look at these definitions on your screen because this is why the enemy wants you to live discouraged because it means that you will live apart from the ability to control your fear. And if you are not controlling your fear, then your fear is controlling you. And that's exactly where the enemy wants you to be. It also means that you will be apart, apart, away from the willingness to do difficult things, apart from the willingness to do scary things, apart from the willingness to be uncomfortable. You're going to be apart from that. This is where the enemy wants you to stay. The enemy wants you to live discouraged so you will be apart from the thing that you need to fulfill the will and the purpose of God for you your life. You see, without courage, we cannot control our fear. Without courage, we are not going to be willing 
to face the scary moments of life. We're not, we won't face the unpredictable. We won't face the uncertain. We will not deal with those difficult and hard things of life. See, courage is not something that's good to have. Courage is a gotta have. <laughs> courage is not something that's good to have. Courage is a got to have in my life. Today, we're gonna look at a guy by the name of Joshua. Joshua shows up in the Old Testament in the Hebrew scriptures, and uh, Joshua was actually a slave in Egypt. He is a part of the tribe that Moses brings out of Egypt, and, and as they're on their way into the promised land, we know they, they don't get immediate access into that land. They end, end up spending 40 years out there in the wilderness, and Joshua was a part of that whole journey. And then Moses dies, Joshua's friend and leader and and mentor dies, and now God is going to make Joshua the leader of his people. We're going to pick up, pick up reading Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6. This is God's words to Joshua. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous, be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Come on, how much you know? You better pay attention when God says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do you see that warning right there in verse 9 where God says, do not be discouraged? Joshua, you cannot afford to live away from or apart from the courage that you are going to need along this journey. Now, God knows that Joshua has been disappointed. God knows that Joshua is disappointed that Moses has just died. He's probably disappointed that they had to spend 40 years out in the wilderness and weren't able to move into the land of Canaan, the promised land that God had established for his people. God knows that, that Joshua was disappointed, and God did not want Joshua's disappointment to lead him to the place of discouragement. So God says, do not be discouraged. But not only that, God is, is adamant about courage. He, he says, this is my command. Listen to me. God says it three times in just four verses. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because God knows that Joshua cannot possess the land he has prepared for him without it. God is commanding courage. Because he knows that is the very thing that Joshua is going to need to move into the place that God has called him. And you know what? It's no different for you. It's no different for me. I cannot be who God has called me to be. And I cannot do what God has called me to do without courage. I cannot accomplish the mission that God has sent me on without courage. And just like Joshua. We have God's word as our guide, but we have to have courage in our stride. It's what God said. God said, Joshua, I'm giving you Moses instruction. Read the book of instruction. Meditate on it. Make sure you obey everything in it. I'm giving you these words as a guide, but Joshua, you have to put courage in your stride. And it's the same way for us today. We have the word of God and the word of God is our guide, but it is up to us if we put courage in our stride. Do you want me to tell you a secret? The secret is this. You cannot walk in fear and walk in to everything that God has for you. I want you to know, you, you can't live discouraged and live out your destiny. You, you can't live discouraged and also live out your purpose. You see, I think God was saying to Joshua, Joshua, I've got some great plans for you. 
Joshua, I've got this land that I want to give you. Joshua, I've got this life that is beyond anything you could possibly think or imagine. But there is one prerequisite for you to move into this life, and it is courage. It is that ability to control your fear. It is that willingness to do difficult things. And God's saying, Joshua, You've got to be strong and you've got to be courageous. You have to grab a hold and control that fear so fear doesn't begin to control your decision making. And you've got to be willing to step out. You've got to be willing to do things that I'm asking you to do. You've got to be willing to be uncomfortable, to embrace the unpleasant Joshua, that's the life that I am calling you to. And come on, that's the life that God is calling us to. I believe that's why the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and he says, For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by what we believe. We walk in faith towards the life that God created us for. We must be people that live with courage. We cannot live by what we see around us. We got to live by the power and the courage that is on the inside of us. We can't live by outward limitation. We have to live by the unlimited power of the Spirit of Christ that is on the inside of us that is allowing us to live out this faith, that is giving us supernatural courage. You see, if it was going to take courage for Joshua to get where he was to where God is calling you to, then it's not going to be any different for me or any different for you. We must have courage to move to the place that God is calling us to go. And we see right off the bat, whew, Joshua's going to need some courage because Joshua is going to have to take the people across or I should say through the Jordan River in flood season. The water is bursting its banks and God's going to have to lead these, Joshua's going to have to lead these people through and sure enough, God does the same thing that he did back at the Red Sea where he parted the Red Sea. God stops the flow of the Jordan River and Joshua leads the people of God across the Jordan River on dry ground. You think, wow, well, that's good. Well, we don't have too long to clap and too long to celebrate that because they come to the first city that they have to conquer, and that city is Jericho. Jericho was a walled, fortified city. Some scholars tell us the wall was probably 30 feet high and at least 10 feet thick. How are we going to get in? How are we going to conquer this city? God gives Joshua a plan. He says, Joshua, are you going to be a person of courage? Are you going to be a person of trust? Are you going to be a person of faith? If you are, I want you to walk around this city six, uh, one time for six days. Then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around this city seven times. And after you do that, I want you to blow the trumpets and I want you to give a shout. And that's exactly what they do. And when they do that on the seventh day, the wall of Jericho comes tumbling down and God's people go in and they conquer the city of Jericho. And what an amazing victory that was. But then there was this place called Ai. This small little town. This tiny little dot on the map. They tell Joshua, Joshua, it's not even enough. It's not even a big enough challenge for us to send all of our fighting men. Let's just send a few thousand soldiers. It will be enough to win this fight. Bible says in Joshua chapter 7, verse 4, so approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. And their courage melted away. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing how fast disappointment can cause us to go from filled with faith to frozen with fear? One moment we are relentless and the next moment we are retreating. 
Things don't go our way and all of a sudden our courage is melting away. Can I tell you something about disappointment and discouragement? Disappointment and discouragement, they do not care about your victories yesterday. Disappointment and discouragement do not care what your resume looks like. They do not care who you conquered in 2019 or how well you have performed in the last decade. No, disappointment and discouragement only care about one thing, and that is robbing you of your future. They don't care how many trophies you have in the trophy case. They don't care how many degrees you having on your wall. They don't care about all the accolades you have accumulated over your life. They don't care about your reputation over a lifetime. Discouragement and disappointment only care about robbing you of the future that God has for you. Let's continue on in the story and the Bible says that after they are defeated there at Ai in verse 6, Joshua and the elders of Israel, they tore their clothing in dismay. They threw dust on their heads and bowed face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. Then Joshua cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side. Lord, what can I say now that Israel has fled from its enemies? For when the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it, they will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? Wait a minute. Let's take a time out. Is this the same Joshua? Is this the same Joshua that went in as a spy in the promised land and came back and told Moses, we can take the land despite the fortified cities, despite the giants, despite the fact that they have better weapons than we have? Is this the same Joshua? Is it the same Joshua that walked through the Red Sea, that walked through the Jordan River on dry ground? Is this the same Joshua that just saw the walls of Jericho come falling down? Is this the the same Joshua that God had promised to be with him wherever he would go? Yes, yes, and yes, this is the same Joshua. And here in this story, Joshua has an entire land to conquer. Yet Joshua seems convinced in this moment that the Israelites are doomed. He's got an entire land to possess. He has a mission to accomplish, but in this moment, with him laying on the ground, he is convinced that Israel is doomed. Why? Why? Because that's how discouragement works. That's how discouragement works. You are striding one moment and you are hiding the next. You are striding in faith, and then you're hiding in fear. You are striding in courage, and then you're hiding like a coward. This is how discouragement works. It has you striding one moment, feeling so good about everything that's happening, feeling so good about yourself and about your future, feeling so good, and the next moment you find yourself hiding. This is how discouragement works works. See, it's easy to talk about how to handle failure whenever you're winning. <laughs> Life is fun and fulfilling whenever waters are parting and walls are falling. Courage almost feels natural whenever you are on top of your game. But what about after the disappointment of AI? What about after your moments of disappointment? when what you never thought would happen actually happens, when you lose what you thought you would never lose, when the business folds, when the marriage ends, when the doctor shares the bad news, 
when your poor personal choices get exposed. And we could go on and on and on and on talking about the disappointments of our own AIs. You see, listen to me. You don't need, you don't just need courage to defeat Jericho. No, you need courage to rebound from the disappointment of AI. You don't just need courage when you're standing on the Jordan River and you are walking across on dry ground. No, you need courage whenever you are trying to bounce back from your disappointments. Because if you don't bounce back, if you allow disappointment to come in and stay too long, then discouragement will come in and lock you up and you will never be able to move forward from your AI moments. You see, this is why this message is so important because there is an entire land to conquer. There is an entire life for you to live. There is an entire mission that you need to accomplish. And if disappointment stays too long and it holds the door open and discouragement comes into your life, discouragement will build a prison that will keep you captive all of your life and you will never be able to move into the life that God has for you. So what do we do? What do we do when we find ourselves in the place that Joshua was in? What do we do in those moments when we are discouraged, when we are dealing with discouragement? How do we handle it? The very first thing that we must do when we are dealing with discouragement is we must get up. That's right. We have to get up. Actually, this is exactly what God tells Joshua to do. In verse 10, in chapter 7, God says to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? You got to get up. Joshua, you got to get up. Now, this is what we've said. We've said that 2020 here at North Point Community Church is our year of upgrade. And we came into this year saying that there was a posture for our upgrade. And we've got to get our eyes up. And our eyes have to do with our attention, meaning that we've got to get our eyes on the author and the perfecter of our faith. We have to get our eyes on our hope. We have to get our eyes on our peace. We have to get our eyes on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We got to put our attention on him, but not just get our eyes up. We got to get our head up. Our head up has to do with our attitude. Our attitude is our settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. That's about the thoughts that we are thinking. We've got to make sure that we are thinking the right thoughts. But not only that, we got to get our hands up. Come on, this is our posture. And when we get our hands up, we're saying, God, I am available. I am ready to move on. I am done with the pity parties and feeling sorry for myself. I am tired of living in the prison of discouragement. I'm tired of battling with disappointment. God, I am in the position. God, I'm I'm ready. I'm going to get my eyes up. God, I'm going to get my head up. God, I'm going to get my hands up because if I'm going to overcome discouragement, I've got to get up. Come on, that's what you need to do. That's the first step of you learning how to handle discouragement in your life is that you must get up. Now, what's the next thing that we need to do? The next thing after we after we get up, we have to give up. Now you, oh, you might be thinking, whoa, whoa, what? Now this doesn't sound much like Pastor Philip. Give up? No, no, no. I'm not talking about throw in the towel and quit. I'm talking about we have to be willing to give something up to God. This is exactly what God says in verse 11, the same chapter. This is, this is simply the prescription that God is giving Joshua. Joshua, this is how you need to deal with this disappointment and discouragement. You got to get up, but then you've got to give up. It says, Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some things that I have commanded must be set apart for me. And they have not stolen, they have not only stolen them, but have lied about it. And they have hidden the things among their own 
belongings. You see, getting up actually puts us in the posture to give up. Come on, I want you to see this right now. If we're going to give it up, we got to get in the right posture and we get our eyes on the one who gave it all up for us. Come on, we get our thoughts. Think We're thinking higher thoughts. Our, our thoughts are being elevated. We're putting our thoughts on those things that are pure and excellent and worthy of praise. We're putting our thoughts on those things that are above and not beneath. That's what we are putting our mind on. And we're getting in this posture right here with our hands up saying, God, I am available. Whatever you want from me is yours. Whatever you want to give me, I will take. God, I am in this posture. This puts us in the posture to give up. And this is what God tells Joshua. Joshua, there's a sin problem. We've got some sin issues in the camp. You have taken some things that belong to me. Not only have you taken some things that belong to me, you have lied about what you have taken. And not only have you lied about it, you are hiding them. You are hiding them. And we cannot move on until we give up. We can't move on. Joshua is not going to be able to move on. As a matter of fact, in two verses later, in verse 13, this is what God tells Joshua. He says, you will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. You will never be able to defeat your enemies. You will never be able to move into everything that I have for you until you remove these things. See, I think there's some things in, in all of our lives that we are hiding. We don't want anybody else to know about. There may be even some things in our lives that we are lying about. Maybe we're lying to our spouse. Maybe we're lying to our friends. Maybe we're lying to people in our small group. Maybe we're, maybe we're even lying to ourselves, attempting to lie to God. Maybe there's some things that we've taken that God said, everything in your life belongs to me, and we've taken some things back. And we said, no, God, but this is, I, I, I want, I, I'm not ready to give that up, God. I, I want to hold on. I want to hold on to this opinion. I want to hold on to, to this priority, God. I want to hold, hold on to this thing, God. I, I want to hold on to this. And God's saying, it's mine, and if it belongs to me, then you are stealing. You're, you're holding on to something that I'm asking for. And so now you, you, you are taking what belongs to me. You are lying lying about these things. You are hiding in these ways. And to me, this, this sounds a whole lot like what Jesus said. What Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said to all of them, if people want to follow me, they must give up the things they want. Come on, do you know what people want more than anything? People want their own way. Come on, I'm no different. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, I'm guilty as charged. People want their own way. And Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you have to give up your own way. You have to give up the way that you think life should be. You have to give up your own opinions. You have to give up your own philosophies. You have to be willing to give it up. If you want to follow me, you must give these things up. They must be willing, Jesus says, to give up their lives daily to follow me. Come on, this is not a one-time decision when you were 14 years old and you said, okay, God, I surrender all. God, I give up. No, Jesus said, if you want to be my follower, if you want to be like me, then this is a daily commitment of giving up. This is a daily commitment of getting up and getting in the posture where you can give up these things to God. And then verse 24, Jesus says, those who want to save their lives will give up true life. But those who give up their lives for me will have true life. See, Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, he says, I have come that you may have life, that you have it to the full in abundance until it overflows. But you cannot get the life that Jesus has for you until you are willing to give up the life that you currently have. See, God's grace will get you into heaven. But how you run your race will determine how much heaven gets into you. 
God's grace is going to get you into heaven. Jesus has paid the price for that. And because of God's grace, we get access into heaven. But it is how we choose to run our race determines how much of heaven will get into us. And it comes back here in discouragement. Come on, there's one thing that will fill your life up. And that's when God super invades your natural. There's one way to get encouragement. And that's when heaven comes to earth. And if you want heaven to get on the inside of you, then there are some things that we must remove from our lives. There are some things that we must surrender to him. There are some things that we must give up and say, God, I am giving up my way. I'm giving it up so that I can have true life, abundant life, the life that you created me for. So we have to get up and we have to give up. And let me just share the third thing with you today as we, as we wrap up. How do we deal with discouragement? We get up, we give up, and finally, we grow up. Come on, do you see that right there? This is the way it works, and it has to work in order. Come on, I better put the exclamation point on that right there, because it's time to grow up. But we cannot grow up until we get up. We got to get up, got to get our eyes up, our head up, our hands up. We can't grow up until we give up. We have to give up our own way, surrender daily to Christ so that we can grow up. This is what God says in the very next chapter in Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and attack Ai. Do you know? One thing that makes you grow up, you will grow up whenever you face your fear. You will grow up when you have to face your disappointment. You grow up whenever you have to suit up and fight again. You see, just do it again. We say here at North Point that your gain is always found in your again. When you believe again, when you trust again, when you try again, when you pray again, when you just do it again. And here God speaks to Joshua and he says once again, Joshua, do not be discouraged. Do not live apart from your ability to control your fear. Do not live apart from your willingness to do scary things. I know you were defeated the last time, but now I am calling you to go back and fight again. Now, let me just spoiler alert. I'm going to tell you the, the rest of the story. Not only would Joshua conquer Ai, Joshua would go on and the army of Israel, they would conquer city after city after city and God's people would take possession of the promised land and they would live a life that was thriving and flourishing. They would live a, a prosperous life there in the promised land. But can I pose this question to you? What would have happened if Joshua didn't get up? What would have happened if Joshua did not get up? What would have happened if Joshua would not have given up that thing that was stolen, would not have given back to God and offered it back to him, if he would not have exposed these lies and these things that were happening in the camp? And what, what would have happened? What would have happened if Joshua would not have faced his fear? If he would not have looked his last disappointment in the face and said, Ai, I am coming back for you again. You see, it really comes full circle. It comes full circle because disappointment opens the door for discouragement. That means that you would live apart from courage. But do you see the same prefix that is in discouragement is the same prefix that is in disappointment. It's right there. And this is how it comes full circle is because disappointment will lead to discouragement. But watch this. Discouragement will lead back to dis 
appointment, meaning you being apart or away from God's appointment for your life. You see, God had a plan and a purpose and an appointment for Joshua, an appointment for victory, an appointment for breakthrough, an appointment for taking possession, an appointment for everything that he had planned. God had an appointment, but if he would have stayed locked up in discouragement, away from courage, then he would not have walked into the appointment that God had for him. And it's going to be no different for you, my friend. Hear me right now. This is why you can't live locked up in discouragement, away from your courage because God's got an appointment for you in your future and you've got to deal with your discouragement so you can step into the appointments that you have that God has for you do not live apart from God's appointment for your future don't live away from God's plan his very best plan for you and your future you see if you stay down that's exactly what will happen I, I know it was tough. Please hear me. I, I, I'm not trying to belittle or diminish what you've walked through. I, I'm not trying to make light of the disappointment that you've experienced in your life. But I know that when disappointment shows up, disappointment is not the point. Disappointment is there to hold the door open for discouragement. Because when you've been robbed of your courage, you don't have the courage it takes to get up again. You don't have the courage it takes to fight again. You don't have the courage it takes to believe again. You don't have the courage it takes to try again. And what I am telling you right now is that you have got to get up. You have got to give up and you've got to grow up. And you have to be willing to look your fear in the face, to look your disappointment in the face and say, I will get up and try again because I believe God has an appointment for me in my future. As we close Plato said this centuries ago. He said, courage is knowing what not to fear. Courage is knowing what not to fear. Sometimes we fear getting back up. Sometimes we fear trying again. Sometimes we fear facing our pain. Sometimes we fear being uncomfortable and dealing with the uncertainty. And all the while, the thing that we should be afraid of is not getting up. <laughs> the thing that we should be afraid of is not trying again. The thing that we should be afraid of is not facing our pain and not being uncomfortable. These are the things that we should really be afraid of. You see, those things don't require courage. Not getting up, doesn't that requires no courage. Staying down, staying just, that requires no courage. And listen to me right now as I close. If it doesn't require courage, it's not God's way. If it doesn't require courage, it's not God's path. If it doesn't require courage, it's not God's best. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live below anything that, other than God's best and what he has planned for me. And that's going to require courage. So let's not get lost being afraid of the wrong things. Instead of being afraid of getting up and facing our AI, let's be terrified of staying on the ground, realizing that Joshua got up and possessed all that God had for him. And the only way that we are going to possess everything that God has for us, the only way we are going to access the abundant life that Jesus came and died for us to have, the only way we are going to be able to do that is if we get up whenever we're disappointed and we say, I refuse for discouragement to be my prison, I am going to get up. I am going to give up. I'm going to grow up so that my life can go up. Come on, will you pray with me right now? Father, thank you so much for your word. God, I thank you right now that somebody who is dealing with discouragement, somebody who has been disappointed 
Somebody right now in this moment who feels like, yes, I've, I've been locked in this prison of, of, of discouragement. I have felt the, the limitations of discouragement. I feel like I can't move forward right now in this moment. The courage of the Holy Spirit is coming into your heart. The courage of the Holy Spirit is coming into your soul. And right now in this moment, this is your time. The same way that Joshua was laying on the ground and God showed up and said, Joshua, get up. Joshua, give up. And Joshua, grow up exactly what God is saying to you right now in this moment. You say, Philip, this is me. This is me. You are talking to me. Life has knocked me down. Life has me down. But you say, Philip, I am ready for God's best. I want to experience his grace and his power, his peace and his joy. I want everything that God has for me. You say, Philip, in this moment, I am ready to get up. I'm ready to get my eyes up, my head up, my hands up. I'm ready. I'm ready to give up whatever God is requiring of me. I'm ready to give it to him because I want to grow up and be everything that he has called and created me to be. If that's you right now in this moment, just say, Philip, that's me. That's me. Come on, just say it out loud. Just say, that's me. Just tell God right now. God, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. God, I am ready to move forward, and I am ready to move into everything that you have for me. Father, you see each and every person right now as they're sitting in their living room, as they're sitting at their kitchen table, as they're laying in bed right now, you see them. Every single one that said, that's me, I am ready to move. I am ready to move. Father, I thank you that the encouragement of the Holy Spirit is coming to strengthen them and to give them the supernatural courage that they need in this moment to get up, to give up, so they might grow up and go up into everything that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put an amen on that today. Come on, discouragement is not going to hold you down any longer. It's not going to keep you locked up any longer. No, there's an appointment that God has for you in your future, and you are not going to miss it because of discouragement. Because I know you. I know you're going to get up. I know you. You're going to get in that, that position and you're going to give it up to God, and you're determined to grow up, and together, guess what? Our lives are going to go up into everything that God has created us to be. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you right back here next Sunday.